it. However, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom, my servants would, would not fight. Okay? That's what Jesus said. My servants okay, would not fight. So he's distinguishing two kingdoms, and which, which unfortunately, if you ask me, one of the great, one of the most greatest things that's been lost, especially in the Western um, Christianity, is the doctrines of the two kingdoms. The early church, they, they knew, and they, they, were, they were literally, um, they followed every word, almost every word of Christ. The apostles taught them well. They had, you know, the apostles had the best teacher, the greatest teacher. And everybody the apostles taught was second. They had the second best teacher. The Holy Spirit grew through the apostles. The apostles taught them well. They were living evangelists every single day. Not even our pastors do that. These guys, they're apostles. And they trained them well. But the doctrine of the two kingdoms is, this is your kingdom. This is my kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. And there's something to, to really understand. Because when Jesus came to the earth, what was his theme of his preaching? When he went to city to city and he taught his apostles, what was his instructions? What was his theme of Christ, of Christ's own, of preaching when he went out? It wasn't personal salvation. It wasn't to love everybody. Okay. It wasn't to say a prayer. Well, what was it? What did Jesus teach? Go into the cities, say go, you know, heal us, heal us. Those who are sick, cast out demons. And he said, we'll teach the kingdom of God. Majority of Jesus' parables are about the kingdom of God. Why isn't that so dear to us as, as, as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ? Jesus' first word out of his mouth when he started his ministry was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's saying he's ushering in a new kingdom with new standards. Every kingdom has a king. And who is this king? Jesus. Every kingdom has servants. Who are the servants? Who are under the king? The servants, right? Those, those, the servants. Those who live there. Those who dwell in his kingdom. What else do a kingdom have? Two more things. I know at first, some of you guys, you know, you guys heard this before. Um, it's important. Some of you guys have it, so it's important. Every kingdom has these four things. The king, which is Christ, has servants, which is the church. Those who obey and submit unto Jesus. What else do the kingdoms have? Two more things. Kingdom servants, about a place to rule, right? They have a place to rule, right? If you look in our maps, there's lines everywhere dividing people. Even, even in America, there's you know, dividing states, dividing countries. Okay, so there's there's a, a region where this kingdom, you know, are. But you know, it's a spiritual kingdom. Obviously, you get brothers and sisters all around the world. What is the last thing that all these things has have in common? As far as the kingdom, earthly kingdom. What commandments, laws to obey? <coughs> Isn't this true? These four things, and the kingdom of heaven is no different. It is, it is not something in the future. You know, Jesus said, uh, it's, it's within you, it's within your grasp. It's not something we look at in the millennium, right? When Jesus comes back, he returns. Or, you know, it wasn't like a, Jesus isn't you know, ushering a kingdom like a, or they tried to grab Jesus and, and, and take him in and let's make this, he's the Messiah. 
he's the king, let's make him king, let's throne him, and let's take over, let's, let's rule and conquer Rome. Let's do it now. The force. That wasn't Jesus' plan. Nor was that his plan for his people. The church. I mean by people is a church. Okay. Jesus, in the midst of the, the Jewish people being suppressed and being treated like slaves, you know, all these things going on, brother, I want to share last week about what, uh, not last couple, but last month, about uh, the destruction of Israel, the cannibalism, they, you know, that's been going on. I mean, horrible. We suppress. Taking more than, you know, really. You, you guys get that idea. And then here Jesus, he comes on and says, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Jesus said, you have heard it said that. And he goes on and says, but I say, but what did he say, guys? And these teachings, it's not a repetitive thing. It's just something that we, we really should believe in and grasp. See, if, if somebody slaps you on the cheek, turn the other cheek to them also. This is talking to the church as individuals. We cannot, we cannot, use this in a court of law right we cannot why because god's kingdom is separate from this world his standards we cannot use on earth but eternally we will be blessed when we submit especially to the hard times jesus said um, in uh, matthew 5 that uh, blessed are those when they persecute you your value say all kinds of bad things gets you for my name's sake. You're blessed when these things happen. Don't you want the Lord's blessings? Or you just want the ones you want? Don't you want to go through the hardship? Don't you want to put your faith in God? Sure, that sometimes it will cost your life. And Jesus said that. This will cost you everything. This kingdom is worth dying for. We separate our minds and our spirit our, away from the earth and seek heavenly things. When our eyes are focused on eternity, this these teachings will be easier and easier and easier. And, and we have a choice. Okay? We have a choice to submit or, or to rebel against Jesus' teachings. Okay? And he said, blessed are the peacemakers. If you are a peacemaker, you want to be blessed? Be a peacemaker. There is no peace in war. Is that the reality? The reality, exactly. The reality is the foundation of the kingdom of God, His laws, His teachings, His commandments. That is the reality. The Sermon on the Mount. It's the Sermon on the Plain. In fact, let's go to the show on the It's in Luke. Oh, six. Okay. Okay. So this is another um, sermon on the plane, Luke 6, verse 27. And when we read this, It, it, it will conflict with our earthly, any government that is earthly, it will conflict. And like what Peter said, we're just children, we're just passing through this earth. We're just, we're not buying time, we're just passing through. We don't make temples and idols and, and all these stuff as we go. We're just passing through. Jesus said, but I say to you, who hear, okay? So he's distinguishing, he's saying this, but those who are hungry for what he has to say, these guys will hear my voice. 
He says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. This is absolutely revolutionary. Nobody has ever taught me this before. Nobody has ever taught me this before. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. That, that is in a nutshell. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those who lend, whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. So this is the conclusion, guys. But love your enemies. Okay. Love your enemies. Example, guys, who's your enemy? In a, in, a, in a spiritual sense, who's your enemy? I mean, not, you know, the devil and stuff, but if you look at physical, you know, this is physical enemies, you know, obviously. It's not. Yeah. And I've always said ISIS. ISIS would be your enemy. Isn't that right? Anybody friends with ISIS? You, you're either for them or you're against them. There's no ways. You're more twisted if you're neutral. You're on, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. You can't be. Like, even Jesus said that. You're either for my commandments and what I say, or you're against. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. Oh, yeah. right? So, you know, if you take ISIS, for example, enemies. Hands down, enemies. Wicked, wicked people. So what, what is our what is Jesus' instruction for for, him, for us? To love him. Okay? And that's it. When they persecute you, bless them. When they do evil against you, what did the apostle Paul say? We we'll turn to Romans. What do you mean, sorry? Sir? Let's go to this stuff. It says, but love your enemies. Do good and lend hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And listen to this. When you do this, you will be sons of the Most High. You want to be sons of the Most High? Yes. Love your enemies. I don't, I don't know of any other scripture in here that can, if you want to be a son of the Most High, I mean, there's, there's others, you know, in the Beatitudes. But one example is to love your enemies. That's, that's the end result of what Jesus just spoke about. For he is kind to the unthankful people. In, in Romans 12. to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another not lagging in diligence fervent in spirit serving the Lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation okay? that's important patient in tribulation when people are oppressing you right? 
Jesus said we need to be patient. Continuing these steadfast in prayer, distributing the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. What do you guys think Paul had this instruction for? Paul, Paul never walked with Jesus, right? Right? The Apostle Paul never walked with Jesus, but he's saying exactly the same words what Jesus spoke. Right? Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your minds on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Be beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Do you, any, you guys believe that? You guys, I mean, seriously, do, do we believe that? And this is, this is, guys, this is totally instructions for Christians. This cannot be applied to the world. They will laugh, they call it into Jesus, they will scoff, they will Jesus. If your enemy, however, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And this is in the Old Testament, what, what's, what's going right now. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will keep coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil. And that's, that's straightforward. In the, that's, that's, there's no way around that. There's no way around any of Jesus' Crusades. What are you guys' thoughts on the Crusades? Everybody knows what the Crusades are? Anybody unfamiliar about the Crusades? Okay. You get, you capture, uh, you get the Holy Land back in the Muslims. Yeah. I didn't really stop at that. When Constantine um, took rule, and, and you know, we, we spoke about this before. He made Christ, or Christianity, his Christianity, um, the, the, nation, or the nation's faith. And what happened was he pretty much did the same thing prior hundreds of years before that. People were persecuted in the early church after Jesus to Constantine. The whole thing was, you know, we're being persecuted, we need to flee, we need to do this. They, they, they couldn't even, you know, they were just, Christians were just dying off left and right. Like the truth says, the blood of the martyr, the seed of the church. So when, like Jesus said it, I must die. When the seed dies, it, you know, when the plant dies, the seed drops and it produces more. Jesus spoke about this when he was alive. Okay, but during that whole period, they was trying to separate and be free and, and, and run, flee from these things. Okay? They were oppressed, they were tortured to death, being starved. And Constantine came, comes along and he does the same thing. However, he oppresses those who refuse to be Christians. He put them in jail. He starved them, put them to death. With the, whole, with the Muslim thing, it didn't just stop at that. I mean, you know, well, that was Africa. But we see how wicked, like, men think they're trying to do good in the earth, trying to use the cross, trying to use certain parts of the Bible to, to promote and inform, you know, way of, you know, as a way of life for, for a country. You cannot do that. First of all, you, you're disobeying Jesus right away. Right away, you have to speak with Jesus. These people pick up the sword and they'll slice and dice whoever. The Inquisition was horrible. It was a horrible time. Okay, and you know, we like to say, well, you know, that's Catholics. 
But the Protestants did the same thing. Read your history. Martin Luther. He was responsible for thousands, hundreds of thousands of kingdom-minded Christians being put to be running for their lives. For people who say they're for God. Christians should never, Jesus, Jesus said, do not take do not take oaths. Right? Didn't you say that in the Sermon on the Mount? Do not take oaths. Because you have to serve one more master. Isn't that right? And you can only serve, Jesus said, there's only one master you can serve. And this master is jealous of. He's so jealous. He wants us to be separate. He said, this way will, will cost will cost you maybe losing your wife, losing your family, brother against brother, sister against brother, father against son. No. Like what I said, I, I don't... In Romans 13, Paul talks about governments, how we are to be submissive to government. He compares governments and how they exist and how they work. And what is our part in this whole picture as Christians? Because Christians are not of this world. Okay? I'm just quoting scriptures over and over and over and over. I was listening to a, a debate um, uh, where this king, you know, two different sides like we were talking about. One was pro and one was, one was uh, anti. Uh, non-resistant. 